All right, guys, let's uh, do some more practice problems with uh, ratios and proportions on 63. So when it comes to solving proportions, um, there's really four different ways you can go about doing it. I said that cross products is like the most straightforward, and I really do believe that. Um, so like when I was talking last video or last time I saw you in class, um, when I do cross multiply, I multiply diagonally. And so when I do that here, x times 12 is 12x. And then when I diagonally multiply here, we get 3 times 10. That's easy. So 30. And then, you know, if I'm solving for x, then I'll divide 12 both sides. And we'll just reduce um, by 6. 6 will go into both. 5 times on top and 2 times on bottom. And so we get 5 over 2, or 2.5. But another way to think about it, too, is to figure out, okay, if I go from here to here, how much did I have to multiply? So that's considered a common multiplier. I start with this smaller number, and I figure out times how much will get me this. And if I do that on bottom, I have to do that on top. So, like, x times what? or I'm sorry, x times 4 would have got to get me 10, which that's kind of hard to do. Um, it's not super obvious, like 4 times what is 10. That's why I like cross products, but we can still write that equation out. 4 times x needs to be 10, and so to solve for x, now I can divide the 4 and get that x reduces to 5 over 2 again, or 2.5. So you can look for that common uh, common multiplier. Although again, like this isn't great because it's not easy to think like four times what is ten. You can also simplify your fraction. So for instance, like I can't simplify over here because there's an x involved, but I can simplify this fraction because um, they're both divisible by two. So we'll get five over six, um, and then. Just really think of thinking of this as a solve for x type problem. If I'm trying to get x all alone, like I would just times by three. And so when that happens, I get 15 over six. Um, or you know we can cross divide and get two. And five over two is your answer. Yet again. Again, I don't know if that's uh, again. If you think that's straightforward, you can do that way. Um, and then the last way to do it is to like convert it to a decimal, which I, I'm not even going to show you because yuck, don't do that. Gross. So, oh my God, there's so many to practice. Um, so for me, guys, I always take a look and if it's not obvious, the common multiplier, oop, not even doing it. I would just cross multiply. So I'm going to have 8.1x equals 6 times 3.4, which is going to be... 20.4, look at me doing math in my head, and then divide the 8.1 on both sides. I can't do that in my head, though. Siri's got to help me. Um, I get x equals 2.52. Um, going right underneath that, again, it's not super obvious, like, how I get from 6 to 4.7, and, like, I definitely can't do that here. So I'm just going to cross multiply. Boop. Boop. So I get 12 equals 4.7 times 5. Siri, help me, please. 23.5x. And then I'm just going to solve for x by dividing the 23.5. Why did I put all these decimals on here? Ugh, yuck. And again, Siri's going to have to help me. So I get, I mean, I guess I'm in zero, uh, decimal land already, so 0 0.51. Okay, let's just keep going. Um, up here, again, it's not super obvious like how I can get from 3 to 4. So I'm just going to cross multiply. So 15. Now I do have to be careful here because I have to fully multiply that, um, aka distribute. So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 1 is 4. And then I'm just going to solve. So I'll subtract the 4 both sides for 11, and then divide, and it doesn't reduce. So I'm going to leave it as 11 over 4. Um, same thing down here, like there's no obvious way how I get from 8 to 7, so I'm just going to cross multiply. Oops, I missed it. 
So 7 times 3 is 21. I have to be careful here. I have to make sure I distribute. So 8x minus 24. Then to solve for x, I'll add the 24. So 45 equals 8x. And then divide the 8, which can't reduce or divide evenly. So I'm just going to leave it 45 over 8. All math. Okay, let's try more. There is no obvious way how I get from 4 to 5.5. So I'm just going to cross multiply. So I have to distribute because I'm multiplying the 5.5 by two numbers. So 5.5x plus 5.5 um, times 2 is going to be 11. And then when I multiply this way, we'll have to distribute again. So 4x plus 12. Then I'm going to move my x over here since the 4 is smaller. And I will move the 11 away from it. So we'll have 1 equals 1.5x. And then divide the 1.5, which, I mean, I know the decimal equivalent, but or the fractional equivalent, but since we're in decimal land, we'll just say that that's 0 0.6 repeating, or 0 0.67, I suppose. All righty, on to the next. There is no obvious way how I got from 5 to 2. I guess, like, no. No, I don't know. I'm going to cross multiply. See, if it's not obvious, I'm just like, cross multiply. Why even mess with it? Got to distribute, though, because we're multiplying it to two numbers. And so then we'll subtract the 2x both sides. And because x will be here, I'll subtract the 5 away from it. So negative 13 equals 3x. And then divide the 3 on both sides, which won't reduce or go in evenly. So I'm going to leave it as a fraction. And then last but not least, no obvious way as to how to get from negative 8 to 5. So I'm just going to cross multiply. So 15x. And I should say too, guys, it doesn't matter what side you put which number on. Like what I mean by that is, so I'm going to get 15x when I multiply this way. You can put it on the left or the right side of the equal sign. It really doesn't matter. Um, oh my God, because of the symmetric property, if you remember that, got to distribute that negative 8. So negative 32x plus 16. I'm going to add the 32x over here with the other x. So we'll have 47x equals 16. And then divide by 47, which 47 is so odd. So I'm not going to divide or reduce. Just leave that fraction. Now, here's something interesting. It is kind of obvious to me how I went from here to here. I just multiplied by a negative 1. So I could do that on the bottom. But sometimes I always, like, double, like, I, I doubt myself, I guess. And so I'm just going to cross-multiply for the win. So distribute 4x plus 6 equals negative 8x. Um, move this x over, so I'll subtract the 4x. And 6 equals negative 12x. Divide the negative 12. Oh, and I can reduce negative half. That was a lot. Okay, let's try some more extended ratio type problems because they're kind of weird. Now, again, a ratio is just a fraction, but an extended one, um, I can't really write as a fraction anymore. It's where we relate more than one number, or more than two numbers, rather. So, for example, in triangle ABC, the ratio of the angles is 3 to 4 to 5. Find the measure of each. So, a lot like the last one that we did, but like I said before, um, I don't know. We can put the 3 there, the 4 there, the 5 there. It doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to want to, whenever you have an extended ratio, throw an x behind it because there is some common factor that may have been divided out. And it doesn't hurt to just do that because the common factor could be 1, um, but I'm going to find that anyways. So I should always assume that a common factor was divided out and throw that x behind each of those numbers. Since I don't know the common factor, I'm calling it x. 
and I need to multiply it back in to find out what the original value was before I divided everything out, if that makes sense. Now again, the story of this problem is that it's talking about the measure of the angles, which again in a triangle I know will always add up to equal 180. And once I multiply it back, like that's how much the angles are. So like that's legit what we're doing here. We're adding up all the angles. Um, I just don't know what that common multiple was that divided out. So when I do, I can combine my like terms and we'll have 12x equals 180. Divide the 12 to find that that common multiple that was taken out of each one is 15. And then, um, you know, if it was looking for the smallest or biggest, I could just pick which one. But here we wanted to find the measure of each. So I need to multiply that 15 back to each of the most reduced form. So we'll do 3 times 15 for that smallest one, which is 45. Then 4 times 15 for that middle angle, which is 60. And then 5 times 15 for that largest one, which will be 75 degrees. So there you go. Now some other examples like that. Um, in triangle DEF, the ratio of the angles. So that one is similar. Maybe I'm going to skip that one. These two look different, though, because they're talking about side measures. So in triangle GHI, the ratio of the sides is 2 to 3 to 4 with a perimeter of 144. So even though we're not talking about angles, we're still going to throw an X behind each of those reduced ratio numbers. And because we're talking about perimeter, and perimeter is a measure where I add up all the sides, I'm still going to add all these up. But now it's going to be equal to 144 because that's what the perimeter is, not 180 because 180 is how much the angles are. So when I add it up, we'll have 9x equals 144. Divide the 9 to get that x is 16. So 16 was like the common factor that all of these sides had that I could divide out. So to find their original side measures, we want to put that 16 back. So 2 times 16 will be a side length of 32. 3 times 16 will be a side length of 48. And then 4 times 16 will be 16 more than that, so 64. And you can always double check, like add them all back up, make sure it does add up to equal 144, but it should um, because that's how we solved it. And so this one is very similar. If we have the ratio of the sides of a triangle, it's 4 to 5 to 5 with a perimeter of 217. Same idea. Because it's perimeter, we're going to add them all up with the x attached to it for that common multiple that was divided out and set it equal to 217. So we'll have 14x equals 217. And then divide the 14 away, which is not going to go evenly. I'm going to carry to home. And that would be 15.5, which, I mean, that's fine. We'll just use the decimal. Then I'm going to want to plug that back in. So 4 times 15.5, or 15 .5, oops, right? yeah. will be 62 units. I guess I don't know what the units is here. And then 5 times 15.5 will be 77.5. And then the other one is the same thing. So 77.5 again. There you go.